Hello and welcome to another Thought for the Day from New Milton Evangelical Free Church. Let's come to the Lord in prayer. Our gracious Lord, at the end of this uh, excellent story full of so much truth, so much to teach us, so much to learn from this story of the life of your faithful servant Joshua. We pray that you would open our hearts again to your truth and we pray that we might be aware of your love and your constant power and protection and provision. We ask that you speak to us now as we look at your word. In the name of Jesus we pray. Amen. So we've come to the end of Joshua and we're reading uh, the, from the last chapter. Uh, we're looking at the whole of the chapter but we're only going to be reading uh, verses 14 to 28. 14 to 28. Joshua said to the people, Now fear the Lord and serve him with all faithfulness. Throw away the gods your ancestors worshipped beyond the river Euphrates and in Egypt and serve the Lord. But if serving the Lord seems undesirable to you, then choose for yourselves this day whom you will serve, whether the gods of your ancestors served beyond the Euphrates or the gods of the Amorites in whose land you are living. But as for me, and my household, we will serve the Lord. Then the people answered, Far be it from us to forsake the Lord to serve other gods. It was the Lord our God himself who brought us and our parents up out of Egypt from that land of slavery and performed those great signs before our eyes. He protected us on our entire journey and among all the nations through which we travelled. And the Lord drove out before us all the nations, including the Amorites who lived in the land. We too will serve the Lord because he is our God. Joshua said to the people, you are not able to serve the Lord. He is a holy God. He is a jealous God. He will not forgive your rebellion and your sins. If you forsake the Lord and serve foreign gods, he will turn and bring disaster on you and make an end of you after he has been good to you. But the people said to Joshua, no, we will serve the Lord. Then Joshua said, you are witnesses against yourselves that you have chosen to serve the Lord. Yes, we are witnesses, they replied. Now then, said Joshua, throw away the foreign gods that are among you and yield your hearts to the Lord, the God of Israel. And the people said to Joshua, we will serve the Lord our God and obey him. So on that day Joshua made a covenant for the people and there at Shechem he reaffirmed for them decrees and laws and Joshua recorded the things in the book of the law of God. Then he took a large stone and set it up there under the oak near the holy place of the Lord. See, he said to all the people, this stone will be a witness against us. It has heard all the words that the Lord has said to us. It will be a witness against you if you are untrue to your God. Then Joshua dismissed the people, each to their own inheritance. I wonder whether you, like me, wonder how you will end your life. Uh, whether you look back over the years and you see how God has led you and provided for you, how he brought you to Christ all of this knowledge of salvation that you have and even if you are yet a young Christian you might be thinking will I last to the last will I finish up as I intend and Joshua is concerned that these people end as they have begun for walking with God is not a five minute process it's a lifelong experience Jesus taught a story, a parable, about uh, a man who began to build a tower and halfway through building it ran out of money. And there it was, a half finished building, which was a monument, a testimony to his stupidity. Or the uh, commander of an army who set out to fight a war only to find he was so greatly outnumbered he had no chance to win it. And again, evidence of ill thought out plan. 
So Joshua is concerned with these people to present them with a choice and then a challenge. And this, I believe, is what God wants to bring before us today. The choice is simple, Joshua says. God brought you out from uh, a, a, an idol worshipping nation in the days of Abraham, your forefather. And he brought you into his own presence and he made a covenant with you so that you would know him and worship him. Then in Egypt, you again had the option of serving and worshipping Egyptian gods, the multitude of gods that there were in Egypt. And God delivered you from slavery in that nation and brought you out of Egypt into the land you now possess. So Joshua, step by step, revisits all of the history which had brought the people to this point. Now, that's a valid thing to do, isn't it? To look back over your past and see how God has been powerful in his dealings with you. What he has done to deliver you from the grip of sin on your life, from uh, being in the province of death in which you once walked and bringing you into his light and his life and his love. All that was entailed in capturing you for Christ and bringing you into this path of redemption which you now walk. Reflect this morning on what that has involved for you and how gracious and good and wonderful God has been to you. A choice then, will you walk on in the way that you have chosen? Will you continue to worship God and serve Christ as your Lord? Or is there something in you yet that still hankers after the old ways, that still wants to go back like those Israelites in the wilderness, who as soon as they came up against a problem, instead of looking to the God who solves problems, actually started to yearn to go back into Egypt where life was, uh, from their view, even in the midst of a desert, more comfortable. The grass is always greener, it said. Sometimes it's greener in the field we have left, not in the field we are longing to go towards. A choice then, will you serve the Lord? You see Joshua's answer, but as for me and my household, we will serve the Lord. These idols who are no gods, no power, no existence, what can they do for you? You are serving the living God. You are serving the risen Christ today. You walk with a Lord of all glory. Be wrapped up in his glory. Be involved in his purpose. Be included in his plans. And you are on the victory side and you will live with him for eternity. Make your choice for him today. But then immediately Joshua confronts them with this challenge. And it might seem a strange thing to do. Should he not have quit while he was ahead? while he had the people's affirmation that what they wanted to do was follow this God they had believed in. But no, he turns to them and he says to them, you're not able to serve the Lord. Uh, for he's a jealous God, he's a holy God. If you turn against him later, he's going to judge you and he's going to bring down punishment on your head. He will not forgive you your rebellion and your sins if you forsake him. And the people say, no, no, we're going to go this way. We mean it. We're dedicated, we're committed, we're going to see this out. Oh, brother and sister in Christ, how we need to know. And this has been on my heart just this very week. How holy this God we serve is. It's often said anybody can pray. Well, I've been thinking about that, you know. And unbelievers who throw words at God don't know the God they're actually trying to address. They don't see how almighty and powerful he is, how omnipotent, how holy, how amazing his glory is. So that if you actually threw a wrong word in his direction, in an instant, he could consume you. They would not dare to set one toe along the path towards him without their sin dealt with, if they knew the God that we know. But you and I, we not only know him, we love him. 
and we're bid to come into his presence with rejoicing this holy god who cannot bear to look upon sin and there's us with all of our filthy rags all around us with all of that disgusting stuff dripping from it as it were all the slime and the decay and god says i have taken those robes off you and i've clothed you with a pure robe of white righteousness which is the righteousness of christ and you can stand before me and you can speak to me as my children and i will hear you in love and i will answer from my holy place a challenge then following on from the choice do you know the god whom you are pleased and uh, you are welcome to approach in fellowship with him finally then at the end of this chapter we see two deaths and three graves now that's strange isn't it first of all joshua comes to the end of his years dying at the age of 110 as for him he has said i will serve the lord my whole household we're told that all of the judges whom he trained continued to serve god faithfully right up until their deaths so joshua dies and then we read that Eleazar, son of Aaron, Aaron the, the high priest, he dies and he's buried at, at Gibeah. But also there's a third grave and this is fascinating and brilliant and inspiring. Joseph's bones brought from Egypt are buried in a grave at Shechem, the holy place of God, the place where the ark is. What's Joseph's bones got to do with anything? Well, because you see, when Joseph went into Egypt with all that he did there, he made the Israelites promise they would not bury him in Egypt. When you are brought out of Egypt, he said, take my bones with you and bury them in the land God will bring you to. So even in his death, Joseph prophesied the fulfillment of God's promises and the certainty that he would deliver what he had said to Abraham he would do. He would give them a land in which to live such is the faithfulness of god you can even trust your bones to him what's your epitaph going to be i fancy i might like put on my tombstone if i have one temporary resident for there'll be a day when i'm not in it anymore when jesus returns and the dead are raised incorruptible to share with him in life in his presence forever hallelujah praise the lord and let's pray gracious lord we thank you for all that you promise us we thank you that death to you is no obstacle but just the pathway to the fulfillment in completion of your promises we thank you for our life in christ we thank you for the witness of this servant of yours joshua the savior of his people and we have our joshua in jesus and he has saved us he is saving us and he will save us. Thine be the glory. Amen.